Okay, our next speaker is Ben Hagevel uh, from Oxford Nanopore Tech, and he will talk to us about selecting uh, um, RPC framework. Um. Yeah, this is really just to talk to sort of provoke a bit of discussion, um, ideally with me, so that I can I can get some ideas from other people. Uh, so we've we we're, we're basically looking for a good RPC framework to replace some of the hand rolled code we've got. Um, so yeah, what we're looking for specifically is a RPC framework that supports asynchronous messaging features, push notifications, otherwise known as. Um, so that's, I'll go into that in a bit more detail. Um, so just to, I've basically got three things I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna recap what RPC is again. Um, then I'm gonna say what we're looking for, and then I'm gonna say what frameworks we looked at. Uh, so just a quick recap. RPC, the idea is you call a function and magically it's called a functions on another remote host somewhere else. Um, and there's two steps to that. There's this serialization step in green, uh, otherwise known as marshalling. And then there's the um, TCP magic that happens um, over the socket. So that's the transport bit. So there's kind of two bits. bits to. Then that, these are the two things that a framework will provide. Uh, so I've got some numbers here for what we require. It looks a bit like a soccer formation. Um, I, I was going to crack some sort of joke about Germany being better at soccer than England, but <laughs> I decided not to do that. No, this is just an aid memoir to let you know. This is just an aid memoir for the talk to let you know, um, sort of, that, just keep in mind what the requirements we have are. We've got sort of got, we're looking for sort of these, these, these things, four elements, three platforms, three languages, one, one port, and I'll go into those in a sec. So what we're looking for are the, the four elements of an RPC framework, as we understand it, are that you have an interface description language that it provides, that you can type in some sort of generic idea of your contracts of interface between your clients and your server for the, these functions. There's a tool that makes you some generated stubs, which is great, generates code for you, gives you an implementation skeleton, which you can then edit your implementation, and there's something which handles the, the transport as well, which, uh, something to run it in. Um, and the, ni the nice thing is that if you change your contract, if you make a new agreement between yourself and your client, then the compiler tells you about it because your interface changes and then your implementation breaks. So that's, that's, that's sort of one of the critical bits. The other bit is that we wanted a framework that supported three platforms using the usual um, build tools you'd expect on those platforms. Um, the other thing is our particular situation is, is probably not that uncommon actually. It's kind of a, these are sort of the three domains and if you like, these are probably the most, one of some of the most popular programming languages for each of these domains. And of course, C++ is perfect for sort of server-side stuff. Um, and then, you know, Python and JavaScript. I mean, how many people are using this triad of languages right now? Okay, I, I was probably expecting a few more answers than that. I think it's quite, I think that's quite a popular combination. But I mean, certainly if you're doing, if you're using C++, you'll be using some other languages probably for the other things, if, you're, if you've got this kind of sort of split of domains. Um, so the, the last thing was this idea that there's, so it's quite easy to set up a request response system uh, from a client on, on, on going on one port, and then maybe you can set up some sort of WebSocket thing on another port, but it's kind of annoying that you've got, you've got an application. I've worked on several pieces of software now where you basically have a number of ports to sort out the application, but each of them serve a different kind of um, style of communication, so request response or just pushing data that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of irritating when you've got an application like this because it makes all these things complicated. Firewall rules, you get conflicts between ports, harder to document. Um, so the, and the nice thing is if you can get all this down to one port, your application has this, it takes on this magical form, the port itself becomes the application almost, if you see what I mean. So it's a lot easier to understand what's going on with an application that just needs one port. Um, but that means you have to unify all of these different kinds of communication things you want to do. So the request response from the client, but also st stuff coming back from the, being pushed by the server to the client. That you want, if you can handle that all on the same, all on the same stream, you're, you're sort of kind of, you know, but it's, you have to have a framework to, to unify all that. Uh, so what frameworks do we look at? So just keep in mind those, those requirements we were looking at, uh, 4331. Um, we looked at message pack. Message pack is a more compact format, format than JSON. It doesn't actually have an IDL, so that didn't really fit our requirements. Uh, we looked at protocol buffers. There's lots of documentation for that. Um, so, so, that so that's good. It didn't seem to actually support 
anything beyond the synchronous request response out of the box. So that wasn't really an option for us either. Um, we looked at Thrift. Thrift is, Thrift is good. We are actually using, we are using Thrift for, for our software at the moment. Um, yeah, very good RPC mechanism. Great, so it's got the IDL, everything you want. I think the asynchronous messaging kind of stuff is achievable, but it's, 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 a, bit, it's a bit difficult. You have to jump through a few hoops. And it's not, it doesn't seem to be ideal. So um, yeah, that's that one. Then we looked at, we looked at Apache Avro. This takes a different approach. So with, you have, you, rather than the IDL, you, you get a schema out as well, so that if you've got a dynamic language, you don't have to, you don't have to generate these stubs, uh, which we, I showed you earlier on the slide before. You don't get this implementation skeleton for the old dynamic languages. It's, it's sort of created, can be created on the fly, because that's the whole point of a dynamic language. Um, but then for the, the, the typed languages, you, 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 the stuff in the typed languages, you, you still get generation. But that's an interesting idea that you can, that you can sort of construct the interface on the fly. So, um, but this library didn't seem like it was well used. We looked at a couple of others. There's, there's this other one we found called Barrister RPC. Uh, that doesn't have a C++ implementation, sadly. Um, but the, this, this idea of a dynamic schema seems to be sort of a, a new kind of way of doing these things. Uh, so the other last library we looked at recently was Captain Proto, which looks like a really, really good library. This whole uh, proxy-based idea of you call a function and magically it calls a function somewhere else, and you don't have to worry about the internals, um, is kind of slightly flawed because you're, you're, assuming, you're assuming the network doesn't exist. So, but the network does exist, so you don't want to necessarily make, have the proxy abstraction because it hides away um, the, the problems that you have, obviously, trying to communicate over a network. So it kind of, uh, this library takes things, takes things with a different approach, and it sort of goes for the sort of promise kind of, um, promise-based thinking idea, sort of, uh, so that, to take into account the, the effects of having a network. Um, so it uses very modern C++, and unfortunately, that means it actually doesn't actually work on Visual Studio at the moment, because it's very, very modern. So that's, that's, a, that's a shame, because we, want, we were looking at this library, very excited about it, but it uses too many advanced features, and Visual Studio isn't there yet. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that's the conclusion. Those are the frameworks we looked at so far. We're still looking at some. Um, so none of what we've seen are still ideal for us yet. We're still looking. Basically, this talk's kind of like, to stir up a bit of discussion. Um, I just want to share this problem. Have you got a solution, suggestion? Want to join our company and kind of help us, help us on work on it, that sort of thing. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the staff um, and to my colleagues from Moral Support, who I think are not here. So, so much for the moral support. Um, so, uh, so uh, yeah, my company is actually, I'll tell you about my company now. We're, we're making a DNA sequencing platform. It's kind of next generation. Rather than these big desk uh, room-sized machines, they're now, it's now something that big, which you can plug into a laptop. So um, it's very exciting to work on. We're doing the, the team that are here today at um, Meeting with Plus are, Doing the, we're doing the instrument software kind of side of things, so the data acquisition, the monitoring. So, um, but yeah, so we need, we want, that's why, that's why we're, we've been doing this research to sort of improve our communication. Um, but yeah, we've got open positions, and please feel free to talk to me when the, like, when the lightning talks are over.